The vision of Ensmo is data analysis simplified to make your life easier. And I'm gonna show you just how simple it can be. So to start, I've got a couple of example files here. They're both housing price indexes. One is for Colorado, the other one's for Texas. I'm gonna take Texas for now, click and drag it in here and upload. Alternatively, you can use the file picker there. Once you upload, the first thing that comes up is a visualization of your data set if it's a time series. Underneath that, you've got an interactive table of your data. You can either browse through the data here or you can search entries here. Next, you can scroll up to the analysis tab and if you're feeling lucky, you can generate a forecast of your data or maybe you're looking for something a little more similar like a transformation such as a moving average. Now for all transformations you make, you can either look at them, you could choose to swipe them away by clicking on that button or below them, you can do things like download the image of it, download the CSV that comprises it, or you can choose to merge it with the data set. We'll click that. What you get in return is a merged value of the data set. Don't worry, your original data still remains. You can come over to the dashboard and both files are here. You can choose what you want to do with it. If you want to keep the old data there, go ahead. Otherwise, go ahead and delete it. Now we'll pull back up the merged data file. And at this point, we can see that the title and the line names are really not ideal. So what we're going to do is we're going to come over to the Manipulate tab, choose Renaming, and we're going to rename this data set. We're going to call the data set HPI. The value is actually a Texas HPI, and this is a Texas HPI 55 moving average. We'll go ahead and hit Submit. And now what comes up is the new data set with the proper names. Happy with it? Download the image or the CSV. Now, because we added a 55 moving average, some of that initial data is missing. It's a 55 moving average, so the first 54 points just can't be calculated. So one thing you can do is you can come over to the Manipulate tab, come down to Cleaning Missing Data, and you can choose to handle missing data in a variety of ways. You can drop any rows that contain any column with missing data. You can do a forward fill, which takes previous data and fills it forward. You can do a back fill, which takes preceding data and fills it backwards, or you can choose to replace it with a value, such as maybe a zero. In my case, I'm gonna choose none of these, and actually, we're gonna remove that entire line, and we're gonna come up to remove columns. We're gonna remove the Texas HPI 55 moving average, submit, and now that line is gone. So I'm gonna head back to the dashboard, and I'm gonna clear out those two extra files. So that would be this one and this one. So I'm gonna re back, uh, actually, we'll leave this one here, and we're gonna bring in the other data set. So this would be the Texas HPI, and now we're gonna go ahead and bring in that Colorado HPI. So I'm gonna click and drag that one in, hit upload, bring it back up. And again, we've got a rel relatively generic name for this line, which is value. So I'm gonna go ahead and come over to manipulate, rename, and instead of value, that would be uh, CO HPI. Go ahead and hit submit there. And now we're happy with this line. Now what we have is two data sets within this account that have relatively identical data, at least along their index, which is a date time index. So one thing that we can do is we can come to the manipulate tab, we can combine data sets, and here we can choose to combine this data set with another data set. Now you can do one of two things. You can either use a document ID and you can fill in any document ID uh, that is to a data set that's public so that you have access to. If you're not familiar with the data ID, you can either find it here in your account or if you're able to view it, it's in the URL. Once you have that, actually I'm going to use the drop down because we have it and we're looking to merge it with the original just hpi.csv because that was the Texas one. Now what we're looking to do is actually add columns, so I'm going to go ahead and click on that and hit submit. And now you have a merged data set. So one thing we can do is we can come over to the stats and see some basic statistics here, like how many entries do we have? What's the average number for each of them? Standard deviation. And then below that, we've got a data set correlation table, which just compares the columns and calculates their correlation. As we can see, these are highly correlated with each other. But maybe you want to see a little bit more into the correlation, maybe over time. So we can come over to the analysis, compare, and we can compare the Colorado HPI to the Texas HPI and we could do something like a rolling correlation. Compare, and sure enough, there you go. Now maybe you're just looking, but as always, you can always merge with the data set. And now what you have is the merged data. You've got that rolling correlation, and you've also got the original data here. Again, if you want, download the image or download the CSV. If you download the image, you'll actually get both images, and the CSV just contains all of the data.
So while a lot of operations on Enzma are focused on time series data, we can also handle non-time series data as well. For example, we use the quite popular IRIS dataset, which is included on the sample data in the home page. We'll go ahead and click on this. And this dataset is often used with machine learning for classification because it just simply lends itself very nicely to doing that. So what we have here are columns, which are sepal width, sepal length, petal length, petal width, and then the class. The iris is a flower, and these are measurements of certain attributes of that flower, and then we have the class. In this case, there are three classes, iris atosa, virginica, and varicolor. Now, a common operation with data sets like these is to take the data set, but actually select data from the data set where something is the case. So for example, you might want to select all the rows in this data set where the class is equal to, say, Iris Setosa. So the way we can do that is coming up to the Manipulate tab, we can filter by column content, and then we're going to choose specific value or range, and we're going to choose class, and then Iris Setosa. We'll go ahead and hit Submit. And sure enough, what we get in return is just 50 entries. The original data set was 150. And these are all with Iris Atosa, where the class is Iris Atosa. Now, what if actually what you wanted to do was split up the file into every unique class? In this case, you could do what we just did three times. But what if you had maybe 100 classes or something like that? That would be pretty, pretty tedious. So instead, what we can do is we'll go back to the home page, click on Iris Data, go to Manipulate, and this time we're gonna filter by column content. And instead we're gonna choose by unique values. And then we're gonna go ahead and choose class submit. This is just asking because basically what's gonna happen is we're gonna create new files. This will only create three, but if you say we're using stock data and you try to create new files based on the price tab, uh, you might end up with millions of files. So we're gonna go ahead and hit yes here. And what happens is we get three new data sets. And sure enough, we get them split up by their value, Iris Virginica, Varicolor, and Setosa. Now, what if you wanted to combine them back? Well, we've already covered combining things. So we can open up Virginica, manipulate, combining. And then instead, we're going to choose Setosa. We're adding rows. We'll go ahead and do that. And then again, we'll do one more combining data sets. And we're going to add Varicolor add rows, and now we have the combined data set. I'll buy it with a very, very long title. We'll go ahead and go to manipulate renaming, and this will just be iris data, submit. As you can see, just because you didn't fill the other values, if you don't fill anything in, the original title is re uh, retained. So now let's do what this data set was meant for, and that is predict things. So in the case of this data set, we've got three major classes along with measurements. The idea is you could find a new iris, not knowing the class, measure these four attributes, and then come to your machine learning classifier and say, hey, I've got these four attributes, let's say uh, six, three, six, and three, please predict what class of iris this is. And hopefully the return would be iris virginica. Now in business, one might use this to classify a type of customer, maybe even the customer's interest. And we would use attributes from previous known customers and their interests, and then compare new customer attributes to try to predict what type of customer that new person is. So companies use this to predict what type of music you would like, what kind of movies you might like, or books, and so on. So let's test this against the iris data. In this case, we'll use something pretty simple. We can see that an at least pretty close value for an iris virginica would be six, three, six, and three. That is not a value that's ever been seen in this data set. You can go ahead and scroll through if you'd like, uh, but none of these for iris virginica are six, three, six, three. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is come over to the analysis tab, choose predict, and the column that we're looking to predict is class, and then we're just going to fill these in. So six, three, six, three. And then we'll hit predict. Sure enough, the prediction is Iris Virginica. Confidence, high, 95.56%. You can click here to learn more about the confidence and how predictions are done. Now, at least on this data set, we probably could have done that just by eyeballing it ourselves. But imagine if you had customer data with 100,000 rows or a million rows. That would be very, very challenging. So there you have it. Ensmo. Data analysis simplified.